So here's a really cool configuration of using the Phantom and external gear. So I have the JU06A powered from the external device, USB external device from the Phantom. Um, I'm also using CV uh, into the SEO2. I have the output of the SEO2 going to the mix in of the JU06A, and then I have the output of this going into the Phantom. And then the out, of course, output of the Phantom going to the speakers. So uh, very, very cool all-in-one. You can see how the, like, the Phantom can be the centerpiece of your entire rig. Um, so first of all, I'm going to play you a, a couple of cool sounds from the JU-06. Here's like that real classic uh, nice sweeping. I'm going to bring in some noise as, along with that sweep. Now with the JU06A, I have a combination of the Juno 60 and also the Juno 106. So it's very, very awesome to be able to have these two really iconic rolling pieces of gear in one small boutique instrument. Very, very cool bass sound. And also that really typical, all that very cool Juno, Juno brass. Okay, so I have these sounds, and I'm going to put them together in a little bit of a, of a kind of a groove from using the Phantom, using the uh, the, the JU06A, and also the SEO2. Uh, CV. So I'm going to uh, bring in the SEO2 a little bit later, but first I'm going to trigger a uh, a sample from the Phantom. So I'm kind of looping that, bring in that killer bass. Now, I'm going to start the sequencer, and it's going to auto start the JU06 pattern. So I got drums coming from the Phantom, the sample coming from the Phantom, but that little arpeggiated pattern is coming from the Juno. Nice, beautiful pad, and I'm going to kind of layer it with a phantom pad. It's really beautiful textures. Play a nice lead. Again, do the cool chord sequence on the chord memory. All right, now I'm going to bring in the SEO2 using CV. So I'm just going to turn up the volume a little bit.
really nice to have all this combination of instruments. And again, you just start riffing, you start having a lot of fun. Possibilities are, are limitless. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper into DAW integration. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go over to the pad mode and let's select number four and that's DAW control. And that's going to allow my pads to do a lot of stuff. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll just hit DAW control over here on the Phantom. And now it sees and mirrors my exact uh, uh, environment here in Logic. That's really, really cool. So I can navigate through my tracks, okay? I can position, song position. I can set a loop. I can also do the, like the skip inverted loop so I can skip over a section of music. Um, that is really cool. Now also I can uh, create markers. I can undo and redo. I can create tracks. I can create new tracks. Uh, so if I, I can, if I want to do some MIDI tracks, I can do that. I can do audio tracks. And I can also open up all the loop, all the browsers, the, the, the loop browsers, the notepad, my Apple loops, and the media browser. So very, very comprehensive, OK? so. Now, you know, actually what I'm going to do here, I can, let me just show you another. I'm going to undo, getting rid of all those tracks. So we're just going to work with a very simple, uh, show you a very simple uh, sequencing scenario here. Okay, so now another cool thing is that you can look at the tracks in this way. You can, and you have, you have uh, control over the, uh, the value of the tracks, the panning of the tracks. You can position everything any way you want it. But you also have another main screen to look at. So it's just the big uh, uh, sort of transport uh, time beat uh, menu in Logic. Or you can look at what I think is very cool is that we have the, um, the smart controls. So here's a very typical sequencing example. Um, again, I'm going to make sure that my pad mode is set to DAW control. Now, what I can do with, uh, with these, this pad configuration, I have four different screen sets that I can save. I can create, a, I have horizontal and vertical control over the size of my environment, which is really nice. I can open up the browser, which is really nice. Not only can I open up the browsers, but I can also go between markers. So for instance, if I create a couple of markers, I can quickly go between all of them. So it's real nice to be able to do that. So to have that, also I have one measure position from this pad, but more most importantly, I have this panic stop button, which is great for, especially if you want to be uh, like a, a musical director and you're controlling um, your your playback from the keyboard. That's going to be really important, and I'll get to that in a minute. But in uh, for now, let's just do a very typical um, a very typical sequencing situation. Okay, so now aside from a couple of the different looks of the display. We have the main uh, beat counter, large display, the all the tracks display, and also I have the smart control display, which is very cool. A lot of third-party plugs have smart controls already assigned. So I have this particular drum groove here that uh, I can, uh, first of all, let me just start the loop here. I have a looping function uh, capability here as well. So if I just start the loop, Right? 
I can change the pattern from here, which is nice. You get the idea. So you have complete control over everything. Okay, so we got that. Now, um, the next thing that I would want to do is like, let's just sequence. Now, uh, I, have a, I have a Logic instrument. Of course, we, we can have all of our cloud instruments if you want to sequence with the, with the D50, with the JX3P, all of those cloud instruments. It's going to work perfectly. But in this case, let's look at, um, at uh, this synth bass. And you can see that I have that synth bass, the, 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 um, the smart controls. Now, if I was to name this here, and let's just say that I want to name it to uh, like analog. Okay, so I name that, boom, it automatically comes up in here in on the display in the Phantom. So everything is constantly handshaking, which is really, really cool. Okay, so of course I have all the transport controls and everything like that. So that's working good. So I'm just going to, I'm going to sequence a basic pattern. Okay, nice. I like that bass track. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the the third track, which is just audio. So I'm going to bring open, got my Rhodes. Okay, nice. Okay, so now I'm going to record this. And, sorry. Nice. Cool. Okay, let me get my click out of there. Okay, so now I'm just going to add the drum track. It's going to automatically play the pattern that's on that drum machine. And we're good to go. Feels nice. Seamless flow. Great. So nice, man. Okay, so here's another example of using the DAW integration with the Phantom. So let's say that I'm an MD in a band and I would like to be able to control all the playback um, for the show right from my keyboard. I don't have to go from keyboard player mode to go to computer mode and do this. I can have this practically off stage, the computer. So uh, I can run everything directly from the Phantom. So in this particular example, let's say that I have, I put all my songs in this one song list. So in this one, I just have four songs, okay, on this set. And I have markers set up, and these of course are color co um, coordinated, so I can see them really easily. And I have markers set up at each song, so I can start each song. Okay, let's go a little bit closer into a specific song and some of the things that could happen. Okay, so I have here, I have a count in, and by the way, that count in, we're not hearing it because it's going out of the sub out and it's going to the drummer. So, or anybody else that wants the click. So that's really nice. So no one's hearing the click. And then let's say the song is starting, boom, the song is going and we're going through after a little while, we get off of the click. That's like a disaster. Okay, so what we have here is that we have a panic stop, start button, red button, push it. Okay, um, so you don't have to flounder around to look for the transport controls. If a nightmare happens, boom, you hit that stop. Now, the thing that you can do is that you can position really fast, maybe two or three bars before the next section. Okay, then, of course, from this front panel, you have volume control. So I keep the sub out loud, which has the click, and then I bring down the volume of the main out, and then when I know that the drummer's back on with the click, one, two, three, four, and I feel it, I feel he's on, and then I can inch up the main output. So that is very cool situation saved. 
all from the phantom. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to close out of logic. And um, you can see that when I'm not connected, it gives me this, this uh, uh, notice that I'm not connected. And I'm just going to go over to main stage. Okay, now as soon as main stage pops up, then the, in, the environment here is going to mirror all of the important things that I need in main stage. So, for instance, now I'm looking at this, and most likely I would be in this particular uh, look in main stage. So, what do you see here? You see I can move within the patches within the set. I have all of the smart controls. I can move in, I can move, I could skip all the patches and move just directly with the set. That is really cool. Very nice. And then layer the phantom sounds as many as you want. Remember, the green is the, 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 the green indicator means that it's controlling something external. The red one means that it's controlling something internal. You can also push the touch screen and it will go to your patch right away. So that is very, very cool. Perfect. So it's obvious to see that the Phantom can be the heart of your live rig or also your home recording studio. You have, um, through USB, you have 16 stereo tracks or 32 mono tracks. You have the three separate stereo outs that you can go out of uh, from Logic. You also have the, um, the two in inputs into the Phantom so you can play your guitar or sing and use all the effects here. So it really is an all-in-one solution. So as you can see, the Phantom is incredibly powerful. It's sonically amazing. It does something for everybody. I think that this is one of the most impressive workstations ever created. So I'm really happy to be here at Craft with all my Craft friends. I'm Scott from Roland. Thanks a lot.
Impossible Burger, plain cheese only. Cheese, cheese and ketchup. Cheese, I just bring ketchup. Yeah, it's real, it's real, yeah. Yeah, yeah but just plain with cheese. Okay, Sorry, that sounds so like a four-year-old kid, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, dude. Look at that. Ben is like so judging me right now. He's like, dude. 